Hello, everyone. This is Carol McManus, and welcome to How to Create Your Personal Brand. First of all, I want to thank you for being part of this presentation, and I'm going to do everything in my power to live up to your expectations. And when you finish this program, you are going to have some new tools so that you can really go out there and uh, improve, modify, amend, or maybe even create a new personal brand for yourself, which will have to do with you, potentially with your business, and of course, most importantly, with your, your writing. So let me just briefly tell you just a little bit about myself. I am known probably best as America's LinkedIn lady. Uh, after I left the corporate world, I started coaching, consulting, and doing leadership development. But I built that business uh, in the 2008-2009 era using social media at a time when it was really not very common in business. And I was so successful that what happened was my coaching and consulting business really led me to help my clients with their use of social media. So as you can see on the screen, I today function as a social media strategist. I still do executive coaching. I'm a professional speaker, a radio host, and of course, I, like you, am an author. So I have as much interest in this topic as you do and want to share some of my personal experience and then we're also going to tap into maybe some of the lessons that we can learn from others along the way. So I would say get something to write on because you're going to want to take some notes and uh, certainly if you have any questions afterwards through Bookselling University you can always get a hold of me uh, and post any questions. I'll be happy to answer them after the fact. So let's start with just sort of a, a, a good general philosophy about life, about business, about who we are as human beings. And that is uh, life, you know, pick a box. Is life what happens to me or what I make happen? Well, I don't think it's hard to assume that most of us would like to be in charge and um, control what, what happens to us as opposed to, excuse me, making things happen as opposed to being victims of what happens to us. I'm going to suggest to you that uh, as we have grown into full maturity in the world of the internet today, this is no longer a choice. Uh, you really, really have to take control of what's going to happen to you. And of course, social media um, probably uh, amplified that necessity a number of years ago. And of course, now we're seeing a lot of the, the repercussions and people are beginning to question their use of social media and how generous they've been. So we're going to look at this today in a very positive sense because the internet and the social media are and should be our friends but they can also become our enemies if we lose track of it. So just sort of let that uh, settle into your mind. Think of it in terms of your own personal brand. Um, I suspect there's a few smiles on faces out there of people who are feeling maybe a tad guilty, thinking, oh, God, I've posted some things out there that I wish I hadn't posted, or I put out a blog post that you know I took down, but I know it was shared, so I really can't you know, put that horse back in the barn. The honest truth is we've all done that, uh, but what you can do and what I want you to do is think positively going forward. And again, think of yourself both as an individual uh, and most importantly as an author and wh where you want to take it from here. So uh, if there's a, a single message there, it's the fact that we're trying to create a brand that works for you. So that said, uh, Jeff Bezos, who I think most of us probably know his name uh, for a lot of reasons, and a lot of people don't like Jeff Bezos, but he said something a number of years ago. I heard him say this at a conference, and it really stuck with me because it is so true. Personal brand is what people say about you when you leave the room. Wow. Uh, just let that um, land for a moment and think about that because the question that I want to ask you is do you know? what people are saying about you. And more importantly, the secondary question is, is it what you want them to be saying about you? Ironically, I think a lot of us think we know what people are saying, uh, but we, we may not really. And we're going to explore how you find out and then how you begin to manage that so that when you do leave the room and people are talking about you, they're saying the types of things that you want them to say. So as authors, I want to give you a little 
test here. I want you to look at these circles. And, um, and this, by the way, is whether you have already written your book or whether you're in the process of writing a book. Um, but I want you to reflect and look at the, um, the questions at the top and the bottom of the three circles first. What gives me joy? What am I really good at? And what does the, does the world need me to write this? Now, if you've already written it, obviously it's out there, but maybe you're ready to move on to another project because maybe the world really didn't care or maybe the world wasn't ready for what you are writing. But the secondary questions are the, the real meat of what will help you in, in your writing going forward. And so if we go back to the what gives me joy, um, the sub question is, what are my passions and my interests? And by the way, whether you write fiction or nonfiction, these questions still apply very, very much. Uh, because uh, when you are writing about something that you're passionate about or something that you're interested in, it will naturally give you joy. So when you have a moment, I want you to fill that in. Because believe it or not, this is all going to tie back to personal brand in a minute. The next one is, what am I good at? What are my skills and strengths? So again, let me, let me divide here between fiction and nonfiction. If it's nonfiction, this is pretty black and white. You're going to write about things you know. You're going to write about your skills, your experience, your knowledge, your expertise, and those are your skills and strengths. If you're writing in the fiction space, and that's whether it's poetry or prose uh, or uh, songwriting, which is another form of expression, um, the the question uh, sort of takes on a little bit different um, texture. What are my skills and my strengths? What is uh, is my skill in uh, giving people really strong visual images? Is it building and writing about characters that that the reader is really invested in? Is it writing? mysteries or thrillers or suspense that keep people on the edge of their seats? Or is it titillating their senses because I write really good romance? Uh, what are your skills? What are your strengths? What are you good at? And then going to that bottom circle, does the world need me to write this right now? Part of how you will know that is who do you want to serve? Uh, in other words, who is your ideal reader? Who are the people that are going to care about the words that you put on page, uh, whether it's a physical page or an electronic page, because I realize we're writing for both, both uh, mediums now. Uh, but once you know that and you say, this is what I'm passionate about, this is what I know, and this is who I want to share this with, you have now hit the trifecta, and that's that little star where the three circles intersect that say, okay, now I know that my writing is going to be meaningful for me, it's going to be substantial and poignant, and it's going to meet the needs of a market that I want to serve. So how does this tie to personal brand? It's real simple, really. If you have hit on all three of those cylinders, you have begun to define your personal brand as an author. And as you think through these, and, and you know, I don't want you to rush now. Uh, I want you to write these down. I want you to go back and, uh, and really think about these things because you will get clues from how you answer your passions and interests and skills and strengths and who you want to serve. You will get clues in terms of how you want to build your personal brand. So when people learn about you as an author and they read the work that you've put on a page, they will begin and to see how the two are so tied together and so extremely powerful. So let me take a little bit different direction. I love this little graphic because, again, with the world of the internet and social media, uh, it's very, very easy to get lost. It's easy to be just another number in the crowd. But I firmly believe in the bottom of my heart that every author that is out there, everyone who writes, everyone who puts a word on a page, um, is unique and different because no two of us write the same way. No two of us think or feel or react or express the same way. So as you're building your personal brand, uh, another phrase that's very common in business is differentiation. How do you differentiate yourself? Well, obviously your writing will stand on its own and that's part of your differentiation. But where I want you to be thinking is, um, I'm, I'm going to hope and expect that anyone taking this program is a writer who is going to write more than one thing. They're going to put up more than one blog post. They're going to submit more than one article to a magazine. They're going to write more than one book. 
And why that is so important is I have seen authors, and I've actually counseled authors, who have invested so much in promoting and building a brand or a Facebook page or a Twitter account around a single uh, book that they lose the, the potential to build on what they started. If you build your personal brand around you as the author, then you can go any direction that you want because people will begin to follow you as the, as the brilliance behind that written word and not just a single book or a single character or a single blog post. So I hope that makes sense to you. Another great quote that I love, uh, and, and again, this is a really good reminder for all of us is, Everyone has a brand by, define, by design or default. In other words, believe it or not, <laughs> as adults, we all, none of us are blank slates. We have a personal brand. Now, I can't answer for you how strong is that personal brand, how positive is that personal brand. Maybe the question should be how effective is my personal brand in achieving my goals. So, uh, fiction authors. The effectiveness of your personal brand is having raving fans who cannot wait for your next book to come out. And um, uh, Sue Grafton comes to mind, uh, you know, a, a wonderful author uh, that we lost recently who was writing the series, the ABCD series. And the book that she never got to write was the last in the series. She never got to write the Z book the, the, to complete the alphabet. And no one else will can do that for her. Her husband has said he will not um, subcontract track that out to another author. So her series is going to end with uh, with why, uh, and that's that's where her series ended. But to say that that was an effective brand for her as an author, the the the, the, the series of A is for alibi, you know, um, I right on through. I've I've read every one of them. Was inextricably tied to Sue Grafton. You knew when those books came out that they were her books. So I'm not saying that you have to write by the alphabet or that you have to write by numbers. Maybe yours is a character. Um, one of the you know very popular ones is, is um, James Patterson. Now, a lot of people want to criticize James Patterson today because he has become so prolific and is working with so many co-authors and has gone so many different directions that some feel that he has really compromised his brand. But I'll tell you what, if you talk to anyone who is an, uh, a um, James Patterson uh, fan, they know about Alex Cross and they know that he is the author and the designer and the craftsman and the and the voice behind Alex Cross. So going back to you, everyone has a brand by design or default. My question to you and the really important question is what's yours? What is your brand? This goes back to what I asked you earlier. What are people saying about you uh, when you leave the room? Uh, are you branded as a writer, as an author yet? Do you even want to be? Maybe you're writing for pleasure and the branding as an author is uh, in um, juxtaposition or uh, in, in conflict even with what you do for a living and what you do for a business. That's okay. I'm not saying it's, it's right or wrong because it really depends on what you're writing and why you are writing. But it is still important that you know how people perceive you and how you want them to perceive you. It's a little bit like answering that question of which came first, the chicken or the egg. So for you personally, the person taking this webinar, what is your knowledge or experience? What is the book that you have written or the book that you want to write? Are you an authority? Again, particularly important in the um, nonfiction space. Uh, you know, are you a recognized authority? What gives you the credentials to write the book? And I'm not talking just PhDs and acronyms after your name, um, but what what is the reason people would want to listen to what you have to say? Are you famous? Uh, I'm going to guess that most of us in the bookselling university space are probably not famous like some of the authors I'm going to be talking about here in a minute or two. But if you are, bravo, that is part of what works to your advantage. 
And do you have financial success? Because there are people who are either invited to write books or have books written about them because of their financial success. Sometimes that's tied to fame, sometimes it's tied to authority, sometimes it's tied to knowledge or experience or all of the above. But I guess the caution that I wanna throw out here is if you just start with, hey, I have a book in my head, I have a book in my heart, I wanna write this book, I really want you to think about what are the other assets that I have that I can put to use here so that as I build my personal brand as an author, it's going to help that book be a successful book. And, and I use successful, by the way, in quotations, because that is different for different authors. Some want to be New York Times bestselling authors. Some uh, want to just have a book out on Amazon uh, and maybe um, run an Amazon bestseller campaign. And others simply run a, want to write a book. And the only fame they're looking for is that it becomes a legacy book for their family. So there is no right or wrong. It's knowing what you're doing and why you're doing it. So let's move on. Let's have a little fun here. And I believe our friend Brian Judd is with me. Brian, are you with me? Or is he muted? Well, I'm not sure if he's listening or not, I, I, but I'll tell you. I'm sorry, I, I was talking, but I was muted. Ah, there you go. Okay, so, so Brian. Brian, let's have a little fun here. Sure. What I did was I, I, I came up with, I don't know, maybe eight or 10 slides of people that we know. I'm not gonna say love and trust because we don't know if we love and trust them. But I, I just sort of wanna play a game with you in terms of when I ask you, what is Oprah Winfrey's personal brand? What are the names, the words that you would use to describe her when somebody says her name that pop right into your head? Uh, successful. Right. Uh, um uh, that's the only one that the, the, okay. first one, the, first, the first one i should say that came into my head just uh, certainly well you know very, what that's powerful yeah it's power powerful uh, uh the words that that come to mind with me is i always have always thought of her as authentic uh, you know, it's the what you see is what you get. I don't th think there's anything inauthentic about her. And then I think people also who really have watched her over the years, her big fans would also describe her maybe as generous and kind. So if we put take your words, successful, authentic, generous, and kind, that's a pretty strong personal brand. Wouldn't you agree? Sure. I would agree. Okay. So she wrote what I know for sure, and and look at that book, Brian. If if you and I were at a uh, at a book writing conference or talking to people who design book covers, what, what would they say about that book cover? Uh, not very good. Not very good. <laughs> not very impressive. So no, sort of blah. Not, not, not what we expect from Oprah Winfrey. It's like you'd expect like an a cover of O magazine or something. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. But what? But this book obviously did reach bestseller uh, status uh, overnight, and in this case, it was because she's Oprah Winfrey. But sure. this goes back to my chicken and egg thing that I was just talking about. Uh, with her, the fame and the success came before the book. So having a fancy book cover, it probably didn't matter to her. Yeah, that's exactly that's right. Yeah. All right. So th then we can go through these pretty fast. Okay. Sure. Our friend Jimmy Fallon, what are the words that you use to describe him? Uh, comedian. Mm -hmm. uh, successful. Uh, yeah. Funny. Um, Absolutely funny. A good uh, interviewer. Yep. Um, and I would add creative, talented. Yeah. I mean, those are all sort of different ways of saying the same side sure. or same thing. But I would also add, and that's why I put this this book up here. This, I believe, is the only book he's written. It's one of those little, I call them cocktail napkin books called Thank You Notes. But if anyone has ever watched The Tonight Show since Jimmy Fallon took over as host, you also know there is a soft side to his funniness. You know, he's, he's, he's not a Rodney Dangerfield. He's not a... Um, uh, oh God, who's who's the, the one who always pushes people's buttons? I can't even think of his name anymore. Who is just one? Well, there are many who are just offensive comedians who take great joy in in um, Don, uh, Don, Don Rickles. Right? Don Rickles. There yeah. you go. Don Rickles is the one I was thinking of. Very successful, but a totally different kind of comedian. Whereas the brand that Jimmy Fallon has built for himself, and this goes back to his Saturday Night Live days, is one of someone who has a soft side as well as a funny side and uh, again ties to that creativity so pretty sure. cool brand similar everybody knows Ellen so what are your words for her uh, 
good interviewer, good show, funny, um, can be serious. Mm. Yep, so I would add to, to that, sensitive, uh, very generous. I would also personally use the word brave. This is a woman, uh, for anyone who was uh, around and remembers her original show and how she came out uh, as being a lesbian and declaring that on national TV toward the end of her show and how brave that was and how she has owned that and owned her identity and become a role model for so many people who struggle with their own identity. So this is a woman who used the comedic format to not be um, uh, a, um, what do I want to call it, um, a protester or someone's out there uh, with anger uh, trying to make a statement, but just being a statement by who she is and how she conducts herself. Would you agree with that? I would. Yes, very much so. Good. Okay. So here's a another fun one. This is a woman who I, when I share this slide with audiences, I usually get a variety of different reactions. So what are we going to say about Martha Stewart? Um, very uh, persistent, creative. She, she built a, I guess you look for one words. Uh, um, no word or phrase. Okay. Just that she um, created a business from nothing. She was uh, yeah. entrepreneurial. Uh, yep. Talented. Definitely entrepreneurial. Yep. Smart. Uh, now, it, it's interesting. You didn't use the last two were funny. Martha Stewart is not funny. Would you agree? No, not, the, not part not of her that personal no, brand. That's right. yes. No, but by her own admission, part of her personal brand and what she takes great pride in is the fact that people know her as being tough, being direct, being fearless. And those are characteristics that she personally strived to be tied to her personal brand. Now, some would think, well, that's not very, very attractive. I don't want to. Certainly works for Martha Stewart. She has built an empire. Uh, she, of course, had a bit of a, of, a, of a backslide when she got into trouble with Wall Street. Um, and then she rebuilt it again. So, you know, do you admire it or, or condemn it? Doesn't really matter. The woman has a strong personal brand. And that's the point of this, by the way, uh, that we all have a brand. So let's get to some of our probably more known mostly in the author space. I mentioned James Patterson earlier. What's your perception of James Patterson as an author? Uh, uh, interesting, creative. I like the Alex uh, Cross series. I think that um, his later books are, personally speaking, are, are uh, the way he does a co-authoring, I don't like that, but uh, I think that his early books were, were excellent. Uh, I, I read most of them. He's mm -hmm. a very a good writer, a very good storyteller. Very good storyteller. So the word that I would add, uh, which pretty much sums up what you were just saying, is prolific. But here's an example, I believe, and I happen to share your feeling, I do not enjoy the later books. I wait for it, because right now he's getting six or eight books or more at a year. You know yeah, right. uh, you know that's not possible. Yes. But they're, uh, the Alex Cross series, he still owns that brand and controls that. So when an Alex Cross book comes out, those are the ones that I invest in. Those are the ones that are by because because I know it's the true uh, the true James Patterson. Right. But here to me is a case, and I don't know whether it was financial greed or a publisher who's just pushing him too hard. You know, don't know the story behind the story, but what I do know that I think he compromised and and uh, eroded his personal brand uh, right, by right. the direction he's gone. So again, a warning for all of us. Now, here's another one. Everybody knows J.K. Rowling, and I think most people in the author space know the story of J.K. Rowling, how this quiet woman in England raising her children with this immensely creative mind writes this, this book, that the original, the, the, Harry, the original Harry Potter book, and then couldn't get anybody to give her a shot. I forget how many rejection letters. I heard, and the person, I heard 75. Is yeah. And I think there's probably people listening to this who have had more than that in, in rejection letters. So we've all been victims of that. <laughs> but the fast, yeah, me too. But the fascinating story is, is that the person who ended up publishing her wasn't even in publishing. They created a publishing company because they believed in her and believed her word. And of course, the rest is history. But I've had the benefit uh, twice now of being in her presence and hearing her speak from the stage and also being uh, in a more intimate setting with her. And 
so when you look at her public persona, which is obviously you'd have to you say that she is determined, she is creative, but she's uh, also has this quiet strength. She's a very quiet, unassuming woman. And in my opinion, she's a marketing genius. I would add that to her brand True. because she is one who took this book and just has blown the doors off of it. I mean, a great, great lesson for all of us in, in branding and what, what the potential is of what you can do once you're onto something and your readers uh, latch onto it and then you take it and run with it. And again, this is, Brian, uh, tell me if you disagree with me here, but I think once you begin to, to see who, it, who your book is resonating with and you begin to see some success, you need to do one of two things. You need to immediately start writing the next book as the, the follow-on. Doesn't have to be a sequel, but it definitely, they want to, your readers are gonna want more from you. And what are the other marketing opportunities that I could um, use and benefit from uh, to serve my readers, but also for the financial uh, mm -hmm. potential success. Very much and so. She's, yeah. yeah, she's a good example of that. Okay, so the, the last ones we'll go through real quick here. Uh, Stephen King, people think he's weird, he's scary. Uh, you talk to people where he lives uh, up in, uh, in New England, and they will tell you he is a quiet, reserved, uh, re just a regular guy. He and his wife go to the local ice cream shop. They ride their bicycles. You know, they help their neighbors. He has a, his personal brand in his more intimate community is much different than the personal brand that he ho holds in the, uh, in the publishing world and in the, in the readership world. So he, to me, is a good example of you can have two things going on simultaneously very successfully. Uh, I don't know that he crafted it that way or designed it that way, but that certainly is who he is. Because the other thing that, that would be uh, a word used to describe him, he's a very private person. Um, no, I, you could argue a lot of authors are private people, but he, given the, his enormous um, uh, success in the books that he has sold and the books that have made it to the big screen, um, he, there's no ego there uh, of, that, of that magnitude. You know, it's it's uh, it's very different. Next one I wanted to bring up: some people know of, or at least uh, perhaps have read, the Huffington Post. Of course, Ariana Huffington was the uh, the brains behind that. She no longer owns it, but she uh, is smart. Uh, she's very supportive, particularly of women. That's that's one of her big focuses. But she's also a no-nonce woman. If you've ever heard her speak or ever been in her presence, there is literally no BS. She knows what she wants. She knows how to get it. And she knows how to inspire people to get what they want. And now that she has moved her career in a different direction, she said she no longer wanted to be part of mainstream media because she learned through her own um, uh, uh, my word, not hers, her own meltdown of having health problems and uh, stress problems and all of those other things. She has latched on now to, this is of course her, her first very successful book called Thrive, uh, the third metric to redefining success and creating life of well-being, wisdom, and wonder. And it's really all about well-being is the most important word there. That is what she stands for today. And anyone who has been around her in the last several years knows that it's, don't talk to her about the Huffington Post because that's not her priority. That brand has been surrendered for her absolute mission to bring well-being uh, to the women of the world. Um, and again, she has strong, strong followers. Maybe someone who's a little less familiar to uh, people on this call, of course, would be Guy Kawasaki. Started off at Apple, uh, boy genius, very successful, but I think most people know and appreciate him as an extraordinarily successful entrepreneur. But if you talk to Guy, and I've had the benefit of being on stage with him a couple of times now at different conferences, and he really wants to be known as an author, uh, um, a, um, a visionary, um, of someone who is funny because he has a tremendous sense of humor. He wants to be known as the real guy who will tell people the no BS way 
to get things done. This particular book that I picked for this slide was How to Publish a Book because it obviously ties to our theme. But if you go out and look at the books that he's he's written, they are on a, a you know multiple topics, but things that he has had experience in that he feels he has a message to the world. And by the way, on stage, the other word that I would use personally to describe him, Brian, is articulate extremely articulate. Uh, so he has a way of captivating an, an audience. And then the very last one um, is uh, someone who, again, may not be as familiar to people, but I think it's a great example because it's a brags to riches story, which maybe some of our listeners um, are in that situation. They're not a, a, a Guy Kawasaki. They aren't a, an Oprah Winfrey. They don't aspire to be a Jimmy Fallon but they have had some experience in life. They have a message that they wanna get out to the world. Well, that's Brendan Burchard. Brendan almost lost his life if no one's ever heard his story. He was living in a car, he had $400 to his name, and he went out with this, with the intention of writing, writing this book and getting his story down and did everything in his power, everything that he had to do to get it published. And of course, he self-published first. He worked with a, with a hybrid publisher and then um, it was so successful. He went on the speaking circuit and now, of course, he's with, with a major publisher running a multi-million dollar successful business, inspiring others on how to you know, go from nothing to something. And uh, just a, a wonderful role model that you don't have to be a famous person when you start out. That if you have something compelling that people want to uh, want to know about, they're they're going to engage. So he's the rags to riches. He's an excellent storyteller, but he also wants to be known as a leader, as a mentor, and somebody who is very very generous with the information he gives. So Brian, that's the end of the slides that I wanted to tease our people with, uh, I came back to this one because don't you think it's sort of a, a good test for us to say, okay, what are the words or phrases of how you want people, not necessarily what it is right now, but how you want people to describe you? So you think that's a good test for our, for our listeners? I want to give them a second. Sure. Yeah. I want to give him a second here just to write down. We're going to we're going to work this a couple of different ways. So this isn't a one trick pony here. But just as you have been thinking about what Brian and I have talked about with some of these other people, please take a moment and write down the words for you. So thank you for playing with me, Brian. I really appreciate that. But I, I enjoy it. Thank I'll, you. OK, I'll continue on here and see if I can give some some good tips for people. OK. So maybe I should take a little sidestep here and really make sure we all understand and appreciate what are the benefits of having a personal brand, a really strong, identifiable, memorable personal brand. And there are several. Uh, one is just self-awareness. When you go through this personal branding exercise to really look at yourself long and hard in a mirror and think about how do people uh, describe me now? How do I want to be described? Uh, what do I need to change or alter or amplify? It will create a renewed self-awareness that I, I guarantee you, if you really do this right, you will have a new self-awareness about yourself. Some of it may not be pretty, and some of it may be very self-gratifying. You may have more going for you than perhaps you gave yourself credit for, or you may realize, you know, I have a few warts and scars out there that I really need to work on. I need to work on relationships. I need to work on certain imaging. So that's one of the benefits. Another benefit is that when you have a strong personal brand, it absolutely, without exception, will help you clarify and reach your own goals uh, because it becomes your own mission statement. It becomes the person, the, the absolute ideal person that you want to live into and live up to. So there's no way that you can't uh, reach goals once you're clear on your personal brand. The other thing that it will help you with is visibility. Now, some people might be listening to this and saying, well, I don't want high visibility. I like being sort of a nobody and I hide behind my words. I'm the author, you know, the mysterious author that nobody knows. I don't go out and speak. I don't, I may do a book signing here locally, but I, that's not what I'm about. I just write for the reader. Okay, I accept that. That's fine. That is your personal brand. But think about it. You do have a visibility through your invisibility. And there are authors, some very successful authors out there that people have never met them or laid eyes on them. 
uh, and uh, they aren't necessarily writing under pseudonyms, but they might be. Um, so it's a choice but you determine what you want that visibility to be. I mentioned earlier that, that word differentiation. Having a personal brand will help differentiate you from anyone else in your space. So again, if you write romance, if you write mystery, if you write poetry, if you write songs, if you write um, nonfiction books, if you write historical fiction, I don't care, fill in the blank, whatever it is that you write, there are other authors, very successful authors, who are writing in that same genre. How do you differentiate yourself? Personal brand will help you do that. And then the last one, and the one that we don't often think about, is that personal brand will lead to wealth and resilience because you're building a strong foundation from which to build the real authentic you and to become successful. Now, I want to be careful what I say there and that that doesn't get misinterpreted. This does not mean that you are going, by having a personal brand, you're going to have a, a commercially successful book because anyone in this space knows that that is not only very difficult, but there is a very small percentage of authors who have commercially successful books. However, Wealth and resilience can come in many, many other forms. It may come through your business. It may come you know, through uh, just personal satisfaction. It could open up new doors for you. So just think about what that means to you and know that that's one of the benefits that, that you can enjoy by really, really spending some time and working on your personal brand. So it all evolves around your story. Now, I asked you a couple of slides ago to write the three words or phrases on how you want to be described. What I want you to do now is a little bit different than that. I want you to start from the now, from the where you stand and what, what the words or phrases are that you use to describe yourself today. So this is not the aspirational, this is the reality of where you are right now in this moment, because that's the place from, from which you have to build. You can't just you know, use an eraser on the blackboard anymore and just erase what your personal brand is and say, okay, I'm gonna be a different person. And let me give you a, an example. It, it's not an author example, but it's an entertainment example. And that would be Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus, uh, many, many people know, knew her as a child, obviously as um, uh, uh, Hannah Montana, highly successful. But as she came into maturity, she consciously and deliberately decided that she wanted to shed the image and the brand that was attached to her like Velcro as Hannah Montana, because she wasn't Hannah Montana. She was coming into her own. And if you know Miley Cyrus today, and most of us, if you turn on TV, you pretty much can't avoid knowing something about her. You know that she is a very, very different young woman. And she consciously and deliberately recreated her personal brand. And she did it through a lot of, a lot of things. She did it through media. She did it through her action. She did it through her dress. She did it through the songs that she sang, through the audiences that she engaged with, through her conduct on social media, all of the above. And she now today has very much come into her own as a woman. And I'm, I'm not saying you have to like her or not like her. That's not the point here. The point is, this is a woman who controlled her personal brand. And she's a stellar example of someone who successfully changed her personal brand. So it can be done. But going back to those, the, the building on the history, uh, of the, those words or phrases that describe yourself. As you're writing them down, don't shy away from words or phrases that, that may seem on the surface to be negative or even potentially controversial. Because if they're popping into your head, then guess what? They are associated with you. Whether you retain them and want to continue that as part of your personal brand, um, then that's up to you. If you want to shed them, now you have a new pathway to think about in terms of where do I take this from here. So thinking about the now and where you want to be in the future, future. What, we're, what I want you to work on is what's the gap? Is, is there a gap there between where you are now and uh, the reality of what your life is at this moment in time and what you want it to be as you go forward? Because it is possible and you can be very successful doing it. So once you've done it for yourself from introspection, let's go back to the outside. Uh, let's go to those people that you interact with, friends, family, neighbors, distant relatives, business colleagues, 
uh, people at the church, people at the Chamber of Commerce, people at your networking group, people that you talk to at the grocery store or the bank. We all go through life interacting with people. How do they describe you? You may know that already, and if so, go ahead and write those, those words or phrases down. But if you don't, I'm going to give you two tips on how you discover this, because this is an important step. Because remember, personal brand is what people say when you leave the room. So there's two things going on simultaneously here. You're working on your own, the analysis of your own personal brand and where you want to take it, but you can't ignore what your personal brand is right now from, from outside perspectives. So if you're not really sure, then number one, go to the people that you trust. Go to your friends, go to your family and say, what are the words that you would use to describe me or that you hear others using to describe me? And really listen. It is really important to listen. Don't argue. Uh, don't say, well, what about this and what about that? You want to hear it very unfiltered. And here's another little uh, tip that you can do. The next time you're out in a social situation and someone is introducing you to another person, which happens all the time, you know, you meet on the street, you go to a new event, you know, uh, in town, um, or you uh, perhaps are at a conference and someone that you know introduces you to somebody you don't know. I want you to really tune in and listen to what they say. Not the errata, not the Carol McManus, America's LinkedIn lady. Okay, that's nice. But what do they say after that? How are they describing you? She is one of the most, and fill in the blank for yourself. Are they describing you as fun, uh, as creative, as energetic, as um, uh, thought-provoking, interesting, um, engaging, I think I said that one already, what are the words, the exact words that they're using to describe you? Because that's how people perceive your personal brand. And you know what? You're going to hear them say things about you that are going to make you light up like a Christmas tree that you didn't even think of or necessarily associate with yourself. These are, it's a really, really important exercise and it's, it's a fun one. Um, if they struggle with words to describe you, um, and they're not really, and they're not really saying anything. It doesn't mean that they have a negative perception of your personal brand. It may simply mean that it's not clear to them uh, what your personal brand is, or perhaps they just don't know you that well. So don't read too much into it, but just take from it what you what you can. So think of yourself as the CEO of Me Inc. Okay, this is you. you this is your life. This is my company. This is my me. So as you're, and again, I hope you're writing this down and just building and building and building. These are like little building blocks that will suddenly come into picture for you, into focus. So define the really authentic you. And when I say authentic, I mean authentic. Uh, you know, when the makeup is off, when, the, uh, when you're at home in your, your slippers and you're relaxed on your sofa and you're really within your own thoughts, who is the authentic you and how much of that projects through in terms of what you want your personal brand to be because because there are some people who really live double lives and there may be some compelling reasons for that but it's hard to do that and sustain that over time and then when people really do get a glimpse into the authentic you th you don't know what their reaction is going to be they could be shocked uh, they could be disappointed they could be let down and they could lose trust. So the more the authentic you can come through and shine through in your personal brand, the better it's gonna be and the easier it is to build and to sustain. What do you stand for? What are the things that are really important to you? What are your values? What are, what are the things that, that you would, I always say, go to the mat for? Um, and, in business, and, and people who have heard me on, on other, other uh, sessions or topics before, have, as particularly in social media, have said that I advise staying away from polarizing topics, things where, you know, we as a society are just split down the middle, you know, typical things like politics and gun control and, and abortion. And I am in no way saying that you shouldn't have strong opinions about these. But when they become so uh, amplified 
in your actions and your words, the danger is that you alienate a percentage of the population that you may want to reach. Now, maybe that doesn't matter to you. Maybe what you stand for, and maybe it is one of these polarizing topics, is so important to you that you want to be out there front and center so that people not only know, but they understand and you become an advocate for that position. That's fine. I, I applaud you for that. Just know that that is going to become the overriding presence in your personal brand. Next question is, what first impressions do you make? What is the experience uh, that people have when they meet you? And this comes from, you know, we've always had, you know, the first 10 seconds, first impression. Uh, do you smile? Are you, um, uh, for women, do you have your makeup on? For men and women, do you have a firm handshake? How are you dressed? Is it appropriate for the environment that you are in? Do you look confident or do you look not confident? Um, all of those things, the body language, all those things that we've learned throughout life, what is the first impression that you make? And does it tie with the authentic you? Or is it being hidden by something because you're just not um, uh, projecting yourself the way you want to project yourself? Now, maybe you want to be that quiet person, that person that people really don't remember. You want to be a little mysterious? I'm okay with that, provided that it's working to your advantage and it's helping you develop your own personal brand. And then tying this all back to your book, what does your book or books project about you and does it tie to your personal brand? If you are writing for pleasure, uh, you know, just for your family, or if you're writing in a genre that's really markedly different than what you, what you do for a living. In fact, I can give you one. Uh, I have a client I worked with last year who happens to be a CPA and he is about as buttoned down, tightly wrapped, you know, analyzer, number cruncher that you could possibly imagine. But his writing is dark and mysterious. He writes in the fantasy horror area. And some of the things that he would share at our writers group was just, I mean, it was like, this is not the same person. So he ended up, when he got ready to publish, he ended up publishing under a pseudonym because he came to that realization that says, you know, I... Uh, what I do for a living is very important. It's what puts food on the table. It what keeps a roof over my family's house. And if my clients knew that this was the type of, of uh, a work that I created, uh, I think it would damage my reputation, my professional reputation and my business. So therefore, I'm going to publish under a pseudonym. That was a personal choice. It was a strategic choice. And for him, it was the absolute appropriate choice. So again, there's, a, there's nothing to say that this has to be all public all the time. It's up to you. On the other hand, if your book really is about your personal brand, um, I have a friend who just wrote a book recently who went through a year uh, caretaking for her mother as she uh, went through the last stages of dementia. She happens to be a poet and she wrote just an amazing book uh, she wrote a poem a day about the entire experience of re-engaging with her mother because she'd been away from home for a long time. She came back home to take care of her mother and went through this experience, which anyone who has dealt with someone with dementia knows that there are good days, but there are many, many more uh, really horrific days. And she went out of her way to learn from it and then to be able to share it with people. Her personal brand, she's an empathic, she's an extremely sensitive, articulate woman. And now what it has led to is a new speaking career for her because she realized she had a story to tell that went just beyond the brand, but to help other people who are going through the same type of thing that she went through. So for her, it's opened up the doors to an entirely new business. So you never know where your written word is going to take you. Um, okay, personal branding statement. When you get this in, in, um, uh, in clarity, I want you to then think about how do I write this, M much like we do an introduction, you know, we've all been taught, you know, to do a 30 second introduction about ourselves, which is usually business related. I want you to think about how you're going to begin to describe yourself to others when you introduce yourself. And the components of that are, what are your personal attributes? 
what value do you provide or problems do you solve if it's business related? Uh, and certainly if it's business related, what is your unique selling proposition? We've all heard about USP. Well, maybe your unique selling proposition, let's say you do write in the science fiction, fantasy, horror space. Well, my USP is that I take people on a journey out of reality and let them just, you know, uh, just uh, go to another place. And that's what I do as an author. That would be your USP. And then, of course, it always ties back to, well, who's going to benefit from this? Because not everybody is going to care about what you write. Not everybody's going to care about what you publish. You need to have clarity around who you're trying to reach and, frankly, be satisfied that, that that's the audience that, that you want to reach and that you're going to reach with your written word. So, Action steps. Uh, what do I need to do once I've got all of this done? I've done this hard work. I've done my research. I really know what I want my personal brand to be, and I've worked on my personal branding statement. What are the action steps, both you know, to continue to build and most importantly to communicate your brand? Because doing it and not sharing it with people is uh, going to be an exercise in futility. It'll be nothing more than an exercise. So I want to give you a couple of things that you should put on your list to begin thinking about. Well, the first is the obvious one. We're authors. You need to write. Uh, write, write, write. And your writing should build in, tie into, and support the personal brand. I mentioned speaking a couple of times. Um, I'm a public speaker. I can tell you that being able to be out there in front of an audience, and I don't care if it's 10 people in a conference room or 1,000 people you know, from a main stage. It's, it's not about the quantity of people, but the idea of being able to speak to people and share your uh, heart, share your head, share your written word in a way that, that links them to you on a more personal level. I believe in joining, uh, and what you join is entirely up to you. It could be the local chamber of commerce. It can be a BNI networking group. It can be um, a, a nonprofit organization that you care about. Uh, it can be uh, the, um, the, the church organization. But getting out there in the world um, in, a, in an arena that means something to you where your personal brand and your message and perhaps your book all become um, in uh, synchronized, if you will. They all are in harmony with each other. Serving is, is sort of a subset of joining. Uh, serving is you're not expecting anything in return. Um, maybe that's you know helping at a Habitat for Humanity build or uh, offering time at a, at a food kitchen, uh, going to read for the elderly, or being part of an Earth Day cleanup. Uh, again, the, the list is endless, so don't feel limited by those suggestions. But by serving, you are going to serve in a way that is consistent and uh, in again, in harmony with your personal brand. People will see through your actions that you are authentic. So your actions now speak louder than words. Then for those who have words to share, again, fiction or nonfiction, I don't really care. You want to share those words in every possible form that you can. I think authors sometimes get so hung up on the book that they forget that portions of that book or other things that come out of their little mind and the ends of their pens or their fingertips on the keyboard are things that are worth sharing, you know, through blog postings, through social media postings, through um, uh, the written word, the verbal word, whatever you can do. If it's knowledge or experience uh, uh, from, uh, you know, from your work, absolutely share that. And perhaps you're in that arena where educating people, actually helping people learn a new skill, pick up new information that they didn't know about. That's a little bit different than sharing because educating means that you are really working hard in a way to bring them forward and, and give them new tools uh, in whatever uh, applies. And then demonstrate. Demonstrate through your actions demonstrate to people you know how they can uh, maybe be a better person and that could be something maybe you wrote a book on plumbing or or uh, rewiring a house with uh, knob and tube um, uh, wiring and you want to um, you know you you've got a book that nobody's ever written for uh, the homeowner who um, is going through this experience and maybe they're not going to do the work, but they want to know enough to be able to oversee the work. That would be a fun book. Um, so you can demonstrate that. You can demonstrate it through uh, uh, 
um, YouTube videos. You can demonstrate it through um, uh, audiences, through speaking, or you can do little workshops. So write, speak, join, serve, share, educate, and demonstrate. And I'm sure there are other words and other things you can do, but they all come under this big umbrella that you need to communicate your brand so that people really begin to see you in the light that you want to be seen. And I would be remiss if I didn't add to this that your online and offline brand absolutely must be consistent. Um, so whatever you're doing in business and whatever you're doing with your book, um, don't, don't create confusion for people. Um, it can damage uh, your reputation. It can destroy trust that people have in you. Uh, the old, you know, there was an age of advertising in this country. It was back in the in the 50s and well into the 60s. Uh, those days are over, and that was the the age of push messaging, where we could pretty much hammer a message into uh, consumers' minds through repeated words and make them convince them that this was, you know, uh, good information and they, that and they were going to buy something. Branding is similar to that. You can't force people to embrace your brand. It has to be through consistent messaging on and offline and through everything that you do. Back to first impressions, and then this is just a, a fun quick list that I just want to touch on. Let's talk about beyond um, your dress, because we did talk about that a little bit, but the logo that you create, uh, again, for your business. And by the way, on books, this would include the design, you know, the colors that you use, all of those images. So the design, the font, the colors, the impact, business cards, stationery, uh, promotional materials. I'm making an assumption here that your book somehow ties to your personal brand. So if it doesn't, you know, put this in, in proper context. Even your email address and email signature, what is it projecting to people? Is the information there? Is it professional? Are you still using a Hotmail account uh, or are you using a, a business email account? How are you using photography and personal images? What do people see when they see your photo on, uh, on a social media site? Is it what you want them to see? Uh, your own personal style we talked about. And then, of course, your book, uh, which is tied to all of this. Uh, you know, the covers, the layout, the forward, the testimonials. Is it working to support or to conflict with your personal brand? So what I'm really saying is, in the world of, of social networking, personal branding, they're, they're absolutely intersected. They cannot be separated. Whatever you do, on, through social networking has to be consistent and supportive of your personal brand. Whatever you want your personal brand to be, you can amplify through, through your social networks. So branding social media, think about, and again, I don't care what platform you're on, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, pick your poison. You want, you want to take full advantage of cover art and banners. Your primary image should always be of you, not of your cat excuse me, not of your cat, not of your kids, not of the boat, but of you, because that's people are relating to you as an individual. Whatever you post, again, this is 101 for us at this point, but I, I, I really feel it's important to remind us, content, tone, humor, language, grammar, your voice. We all know in writing what our voice is. Your voice has to come through and, and support your personal brand, as well as how you engage with others. Do you engage at all? Do you like, comment, or share, or retweet? And if you do, do you do it in a supportive way, or do you do it in a destructive way? Do you do it in a confrontational way, or do you do it in a constructive way? Um, that will reflect on your personal brand. And then, of course, along with that posting, what images do you post and what videos do you create? Once you move off of social media and you go to that real estate that you own on the web, which for most of us is our website or our blog, again, I want you to look at it through a different lens now. The design and style, the layout, the fonts, uh, the information about you and your book and your business, uh, does it properly integrate with social media? If you have sales offerings, uh, are they supportive of how you want to be perceived. There's some really cheesy ways that people put sales offerings out there and they can be very offensive to people and, or very confusing. Is, is it consistent with your personal brand? And then of course, the most important to me is social proof. Are other people saying good things about you? Those are the testimonials, those are the uh, endorsements, those are all the things where others besides you are reinforcing the message that you wanna put out there. So last slide and last thought, uh, and this is again um, 
for social media in particular, for, for traditional marketing, if you're still, whether it's face-to-face -face meetings or if you're on radio, if you're networking, uh, any of those things, and just through your daily actions and interface with people, follow the think rule. Always ask yourself, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Not everything you put out will, will pass that litmus test. I get that. But if it's not true, helpful, inspiring, necessary, or kind, if it's none of the above, then I would think long and hard before I put it out there. And if it doesn't pass the test of all five of those, ask yourself why and should it or could it before you post. Because whatever you do put out there, uh, at least as of today, there is no delete button when you put things out on the internet. And that's through social media and any place else. You can take posts down and think they're gone and chances are they're not. So knowing that this is so critical to your personal brand, I would really, really encourage you to uh, rethink where you wanna go going forward. So I wanna thank you for listening and participating. I really, really appreciate your time and wish you a lot of luck with your personal brand. And as I said before, if you have any questions, please through Bookselling University, reach out to me and I will do my very best to answer your questions. Thanks again, this is Carol McManus signing off.